This is my Franken terminal. This is a dumb terminal that I made out of an assortment of fairly modern parts, hence Franken terminal, because it's just cobbled together, to use with my Altair 8800 Arduino clone, which is also a modern kind of reproduction of something much older. There is a slight problem with this. So the keyboard in here is a USB keyboard, but it's designed for EPOS, for a till. I replaced this recently with what I thought was a native USB keyboard of the same type. Previously in there I had a PS2 type keyboard, which if you plugged it into a converter, one of those sort of PS2 to USB splitters, the terminal device in here, which is an Axel 3000 Platine terminal, thought there was a mouse attached and produces a mouse cursor. Let me get you in closer so you can see that. So yeah, if the terminal device in here thinks there is a mouse attached, it produces this mouse cursor here. If there's no mouse attached, it doesn't. So a pure native USB keyboard will not trigger that mouse cursor to appear. But it seems this Prekitec EPOS keyboard, even though it is a USB plug on it, must have some sort of USB to PS2 adapter inside of it. I think that's true. Solutions to this might include replacing this keyboard with something else, but I haven't really found anything that looks quite as suitable as this for a fake, old-fashioned, dumb terminal. So I want to stick with this. It's programmable as well, so I can do whatever key layout I like on here, and the keys just pop off, and you can rearrange them. You can put keys that are two key spaces or four key spaces on there. You can configure it any way you like, and I like that. So I haven't found a suitable replacement keyboard for it, not one that's cheap enough anyway. I mean, I could put a really nice mechanical keyboard in there, but it seems a bit of a waste of money. The other solution is to actually attach a mouse and move the cursor down there. So down at that bottom right corner of the screen, it's just not visible. And then we can get on with the business of, you know, using this thing as it's intended to be used. That works. But of course, you have to attach the mouse. You have to move it down there every time. That kind of breaks the suspension of disbelief that you get from using this device. So solution number three, and it is an awful bodge, but it's what I'm going to go with, is to create a mouse emulator that I can plug into the USB port around the back and that will automatically move the mouse out of the way, hopefully really quickly. That's the plan. So let's crack on and make that. My solution for this is this thing, which is the Leonardo Beetle, or the Beetle Leonardo microcontroller. So it's a tiny little microcontroller on a USB carrier board that can plug directly into a USB A socket. Oh, not greatly heartened by the, I think that's just a little piece of metal. I'm hoping that's not a missing surface mount component. I think we need to just get a closer view of this. So this is based on the Atmega 32U4. That's a microcontroller, an 8-bit microcontroller with, I think, 32 megabytes of flash and 2 kilobytes of RAM. Interestingly, so this device here has more computing power than the original Altair 8800. And that seems to be the pattern with this whole emulated setup I'm building here, actually, is that there are many multiples of the processing power of the original Altair 8800 in the whole setup. There's the Altair 8800 itself is emulated on quite a powerful Arduino based board. The terminal emulator that I've got it connected to no doubt has at least one microcontroller and probably one low power CPU and several microcontrollers in it. The keyboard, the programmable keyboard, almost certainly has more than one microcontroller in it. And that's probably also true of the VGA display. So it is bizarre and kind of weirdly ironic that we're trying to emulate a really basic system here by adding more and more multiples of the original power of the machine. But that's just the way things go. This is, by modern standards, a very low-powered and low-spec board. But if they had stuff like this back in the 1960s, it would have been absolutely revolutionary. So here's how this all works. On my development PC, we plug the little Beetle board into the USB socket and fire up the Arduino development environment. We tell it which board we're using and which port it's connected on, then start writing some code. Uh, that's probably an overgenerous application of the word sum. 
since this program's only going to be a few lines, in fact, in one way that seems like an almost obscene underutilization of the capabilities of this little board, but they are designed for solving these sort of small problems. For most normal programs on Arduino, you'd put your main code inside the loop function and it would run repeatedly, but there are a couple of reasons not to do that here. Firstly, I only want this code to run when the machine first powers on and that unwanted mouse cursor appears. But nextly, and most importantly, the function of this device will be to pretend it's a mouse and move the cursor. If I make it do that continuously forever, it will become very difficult to reprogram it in the future, because as soon as I plug it into my development PC, it will be trying to move the mouse down and to the right, and that would hamper my efforts to click the buttons in the Arduino IDE. There's probably keyboard navigation to overcome that, but let's not make unnecessary trouble for ourselves. My first pitfall was finding that the board simply didn't respond at all to programming, but fortunately I bought three of them. They were like £4 each, and it was cheaper to buy several and get free shipping than it was to just buy one. Anyway, remember that little shiny piece I found when I unpacked it? Well, I thought that was just a stray piece of wire or something, but nope, it turns out that was part of this surface mount component here. I'm not exactly sure what that is or was. I think it might be the crystal oscillator. But here's the second one I opened, that little shiny thing still attached on top here, so when I plugged this in, it worked. I went through several iterations of code, including making a few mistakes, such as spelling the name of the mouse library without a capital letter, so that's case sensitive, good to know. I also didn't realise the offset values passed to the mouse move function need to be signed char values, so I can't move it all in one big jump. I just have to create a loop and move it repeatedly by smaller amounts. This won't matter in the final version because it will run super fast as soon as I take out those delay instructions which are only there at the moment so I can see it working. You can see in this version of the code what would happen if I had included the mouse move code in the main loop function. Here it's only going to move it for a finite period, but you can see it's basically fighting me as I try to move the mouse back up and to the left. Anyway, I got a version that will wait 20 seconds or so, which is how long I timed that terminal to boot up the first time. Then it will move the mouse repeatedly down and to the right, and then just do nothing forever. Let's give that a try on the machine. Right, time to give this a test then. It's plugged in around the back. Let's power it up. Now it should wait 20 seconds, and then it should make 20 attempts at moving the mouse right off the screen. Now I might tune that delay because it seems like sometimes this takes longer to start up than others, but we'll just wait the 20 seconds. There we go. So the mouse has gone. No more troubling mouse cursor. It is there, although I haven't got this mouse attached now, so I can't bring it back. And that little Leonardo device will now sit here doing nothing for the rest of the session. I'm just going to power this down completely because I just want to test that power off delay because it seems like this is booting up a bit quicker than it did before. So complete power cycle now. That is quicker than I thought. Well, what I might do here is shorten that initial delay and have it make more attempts to move the mouse. So it doesn't really matter when it happens, it'll just have a go at moving the mouse for the first minute or so of being run. Anyway, let's just go and give that a little tune and we'll be right back. So yeah, as I discussed, I'm just gonna take out that initial delay it will start trying to move the mouse as soon as it's powered up and it's going to try moving the mouse 20 times by an offset of 100 units down and to the right. I think those might be pixels but I'm not sure. And that attempt is also enclosed within a loop that runs 100 times at one second intervals. This way the maximum delay between the mouse cursor appearing and then vanishing off the screen should be a second, usually less. And as long as the cursor appears within 100 seconds of the whole system starting up, which it always does, then it will work. And furthermore, since this only runs for 100 seconds, then stops, if I need to reprogram it, I still can, just by letting it complete its work. Then I'll have control over the mouse of the machine it's plugged into. Anyway, so that's the kind of maybe final version. Let's give it a try. Okay, so yeah, now there is no initial delay, but it makes 100 attempts to move the mouse down the screen at one second delays. So if I want to program this back on the PC, I'll have to plug it in, wait for it to finish its shenanigans, which is about a minute and a half, before I can program it because it is going to continually be fighting me on the mouse. But that's fine. That's what I want it to do on this machine. So that's plugged in. Let's power it on. We should only see the mouse cursor very briefly now, if at all. Yeah, gone. Good. That's done the job. So there we go. That's how to get rid of a troubling mouse cursor on a fake dumb terminal. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.